Hey everybody, welcome to Patty Tan Gaming. I'm Patrick, and this is my Day 1 Beginner's Guide to Darkness Falls. So, let's get into it. Alright, here we are in Darkness Falls. When you first start, you will get this first dialog box, which is from the developer, Kane. Just thanking you guys for playing and your support, and thanking his testers for testing everything out and making the patches and mods work. Hit continue, we get this next dialog box, which is pretty much the background of everything that's been going on and how this started, and how you got to where you are now. Hit continue. We'll take a look around. We are in the forest biome, which is the best biome to start in. There are four biomes. You have the wasteland, the winter biome, or the snow biome, the desert, and the forest. The forest is the best one. So the first thing we're going to do it says in the top right, open the backpack, gather all those supplies. So that's what we're going to do. You have this backpack down here. So you can see all these symbols. They have the person bending forward with a box on their back. That means if you put anything in these slots, you will be encumbered, which means that you will be moving slower than you should be. So we're going to open the backpack, select the backpack, hit open. So that gave us all the things. The backpack contained a tattered map. Looking at it and comparing the landmarks you can see, you notice something marked with an X. A note is scrawled next to it saying White River. Maybe it's a settlement where you can be safe for a while. It continues. So that is going to be the trader. And it's 156 meters away. You can see that in the top right. That's where all of your quests will show up for what you need to do and the distance. So we're going to look around and it's over there. So you can see the exclamation point. And you can see it on your compass at the very top. Now if you look in the bottom left of the screen, you can see two things. The person bent over with the box on their back and the number five and the jacket. The first thing is the person bent over with the box on their back. That is how many slots you are over your ability to carry things. So what I mean by that is, I'll show you right now. It's these slots. Now, the next thing I do is use the backpack, and this will help me explain the, the five um, encumbered things. So the next thing you want to do is use the backpack. Select the backpack, hit use. Now close your inventory, open it back up. See these boxes, how they're empty? That's how many items you can carry before you become encumbered. And that will increase throughout the game depending on clothing you're wearing, mods you put on, Later in the game, you can also craft a larger backpack to carry more things before you become encumbered and start slowing down. The next thing is the jacket. I'm going to select that. And this tells you what it does. There is no experience penalty on death. This protection will decrease and disappear at level 6, so think ahead. What this jacket also does is it protects you from the elements. So if you are in the snow biome, it protects you from getting cold. If you're in the desert biome, it protects you from overheating. If you're in the wasteland, it will actually protect you from the radiation. You will not take radiation damage in the wasteland as long as that jacket is on, which I believe it goes away after level 1. The next thing I do is I go to my skills, because you start with two available points. And I immediately choose tool crafting and weapon crafting. Now, whenever I craft a weapon or a tool, it will start at level 11 instead of level 1. So I instantly have more stronger, more powerful, and more durable tools and weapons. The next thing I do is I move my land claim block all the way to the end. This is just how I set things up. Put my bedroll next to it. And then the hammer, torch, and this is your blank class paper. If you select this and hit recipes, these are the classes you can choose throughout the game. You should choose one to start, but not yet. I wait until I get to the trader, and I will explain why. I always start with either the laborer class or the farmer class. And what is available at the trader will determine which one I choose. So let's get on with more 
more of the game. So I'm going to move toward the trader. And I'm going to be harvesting things as I go. So I'm going to loot this bag of trash. Got some... And then we got some uh, lockpicks. And I'm going to loot this car. It's right here. I might as well. Let's see what's in here. Some ammo. Okay, some arrows. Now the main things I want to harvest on the way there are plant fibers, which you get just by punching clumps of grass. And I want wood and stone. So the wood you can get from either punching a tree, which won't give you as much as quickly, or you can punch these little spindly stick bush things. I'm going to do that. Punch this stuff. I'm going to pick up these rocks as I go. I'm also going to loot any um, nests, so any bird nests that I come across. There's a backpack here. Let's search in there and see what we got. Okay, some armor. I'm not worried about the armor right now. My whole purpose right now is getting to the trader, but looting along the way. Got some feathers, stone, a bunch of wood bushes right here. You can see them. We're also going to loot this car. We have a shovel now and shotgun shovel. Now, if I didn't have the shovel, I would craft a stone shovel. So I'm going to show you. Stone shovel because there are a few weapons and tools that I want to craft right from the beginning. I'm just going to craft this and then I'm going to scrap it because I'll replace it with this shovel. But you see it crafted at level 11. So we're just going to scrap that because I'm going to move this shovel down here. Alright, so let's gather more wood. Now the first tools and weapons that I want to craft are the wooden club, the bow, the stone axe, and the spear. So let's see if we can do any of those right now. We can make a wooden club. We can make a bow. We can't make a spear. I think it's because we don't have enough stone. I think we need five stone to make the spear. Oh, there's a stone right here, so that should do it. Let's see. Yep, right there. Stone Spear. Now the way I set these up is I always put my club, spear, bow, and that's usually a firearm of some kind if I have one. So the first four slots are my weapons, the next one is usually my bandages, and then I go pickaxe, or in this case we're going to do a stone axe when we make that shovel, and axe. So let's see if we can make a stone axe. We can't because we don't have stone. So let's see if we can find some stone around here. Loot the nest. Oh, we got some eggs as well. I'm going to keep looting some of this wood. And you just get that just by hitting those little bushes. Okay, here's a stone. So in order to make the stone axe, you need to create sharp rock. And that is done by, you can either type it in, or you can go, you can select the rock and hit rest. Yeah, oh, not what I wanted to do. <laughs> you need to select the stone and hit recipes and it'll show you what you can make with it. So sharp rock. Now when you're making a sharp rock or a stick, sticks are needed for arrows, it's a one to two ratio. One rock, one small stone, will make two sharp rocks. I'll do that, see? There's two right there. Now that we have these, we can make the stone axe. Now for now, I'm just gonna put the stone axe in where I usually put a regular axe. Since we've done that, we can also harvest these gut piles. Now we just got six bones from that gut pile. You need five to make a bone knife. So we're going to select the bone, recipes, bone knife, craft. This will help with harvesting animals, gut piles, things like that. Bone knives or knives of any kind are better 
and get you more resources than other tools or weapons. So we're moving toward the trader, which is right there. That's a pig. For the most part, the pigs leave you alone if you leave them alone. There are some at um, points of interest, so POIs, that will not leave you alone. They are pretty much set to aggressive, and they will come out to attack you. I'm not worried about that right now. Right now, let's make some arrows for our bow. Or in order to make arrows, you need to craft sharp rock. So we'll type that in. We're going to use all three of our rocks that we have. And that'll make six sharp rocks. And then we make six sticks. We're going to make... We're going to tell it to do three, and it'll double it. So these two are what you need. So you need sticks, sharp rock, and feathers. So now we can make stone arrows. Now there are two options. The first one is if you have cloth fragment. We don't want to use cloth fragment to make arrows because we want to save the cloth for other things. So we're going to choose the second option, which uses feathers. We're going to make all of them. Now we at least have some ammo for our bow so we can start attacking things at range. We're going to continue looting on the way to the trader. I'm going to pick up this rock. Now if you want to harvest rock or a small stone, you can do it in three ways. Well, three main ways. You can pick up the small stones on the ground like this, like we have been doing. You can hit rocks with your stone axe or a pickaxe. If you're going to go that route, these small stone, these small boulders, they work well, but you want the large ones, like that one way out there in the distance. The larger ones are way better for harvesting. So we're just going to hit this a few times with our stone axe. And I'm just going to get 10 stones. I really don't care about using all of those. Now we're just going to hit this tree a few times, get some wood. And we'll chop down the tree, why not? Now when you chop down trees, you will get the seeds that go with that tree. So it's either going to be acorns or it's going to be pine cones. I usually get rid of them because I'm not worried about planting trees right now. So let's get into the trader. Oh, you can also pick up these chairs. So I'm going to pick those up, and I'm going to scrap them. Alright, so we are in the trader now. And I'm just going to pick a spot to offload some of the stuff I have in my inventory. And, and uh, organize my inventory a little bit. So I'm going to put this in there. Just stuff I don't need. I can't use the steel arrows with a primitive bow. So again, I don't need any of this right now. I don't have a firearm. The eggs I'll throw in there. Just put ammo up here. Now, the first thing I want to do in here is find the forge, which I believe is over here. There it is. Now, this is a destroyed forge, which means it doesn't work. Wow, 64 forged iron, that's amazing. Anyway, this will determine what class I choose. Remember I said I either choose laborer or I choose farmer. If this was a working forge, I would choose farmer. But since it's not, I'm going to choose the laborer class because that will give me access to a forge. I actually have to create a forge or craft a forge as one of the steps for the class. One of the quests. If I didn't do that, I would have to wait until level 10 or until I found a schematic or found another working one. So since this is a destroyed forge, I can't use it. I'm going to go with the laborer class. So you select your blank class paper, hit recipes, I'm going to choose laborer. Then I'm going to hit craft. There's the book, select it again, and hit read. 
Knowing how to build is going to be useful these days. Let's get you working right away because you'll need to learn how to collect your own resources from now on. Get cracking. Accept. So we're going to go over here next and talk to the trader. Something you like? You'll see his inventory. There's nothing he can give us. We don't have enough money to Maybe buy anything. Next time, but you can loot travel, everything survivor. in here. If you can get close enough, you can destroy his desk. You can kill him. I don't recommend killing him. He will respawn, but there's just no point. You can destroy his desk to get back to that safe later on if you want to. If you want to open it. The very next thing I do after talking to him is I go up here to my quests and I choose my class quest and I track it. So now it is appearing in the top right hand corner of my screen. After that, I immediately get upstairs here. What are you looking for? And this is where I'm going to place my bedroll because I'm going to stay in the trader for probably the first week and that's because the first week you're getting settled you're getting resources you're building a horde base you have a lot on your plate to deal with establishing a home or taking over a POI is not what I want to focus my attention on right now So after that I walk around I pick up whatever I can I loot, I pretty much loot the trader for everything that I possibly can find. So don't forget to search every door, search the toilet, search everything. We don't need a human tour. <laughs> that is the one thing we don't need. Now sometimes you will get lucky and find a cooking pot in a kitchen. If you don't find one in the trader, you can try to get one in a house, or once you get a forge, you can make one. So it all depends on what you want to do. Now again, I have all this stuff. I'm going to scrap the cans, scrap the chairs, get everything I can from those. I can sell the flashlight. I'm going to keep this die, because the die comes in handy later on when we want to make another glass paper. Next thing I do, I come up here, I make a campfire. That'll happen after everything else is scrapping. So you can see the timeline down here. This has 11 seconds, this has 2 seconds. 2 seconds for that. So we're just going to continue walking around the trader, grabbing everything we can, hitting everything we can and just harvesting as much stuff as possible. Destroyed cement mixer, so we can't use it, but it's got some stuff in it that we can use later on. Right now my primary focus is just getting set up in the trader so I have a safe place to be. and then working on my class quests. Oh, see that? Chemistry station schematic. Now, see how the book is closed? That means I haven't read it. So you hit read, and now I've learned how to make that. So if I had the stuff to make it, I could, but I don't. I'm also gonna destroy some of this trash on the floor, just because if I need to walk around here at night, I don't need it making noise. I think there's glass up here. Yeah, right there. I'm going to start putting stuff in this desk. Let's set our campfire down. We're going to put it right there. And we're just going to put a little bit of fuel into it. Because now we'll start making this can of murky water. So you go up here, can boiled water. Once it's boiled, then we can actually drink it. So that'll be going while we are offloading our stuff. Now I would I would organize this differently, but I'm not going to right now. So just stuff that I'm not going to use right now, we're going to go sell this. 
We'll sell that flashlight. Was there something we dropped in here that we can sell? We're going to sell the armor as well. Okay, so let's go back over to him. Actually, can we search these? We can. We got another shovel. Got some ammo. Yeah, a good thing to do is search the entire trader prior to selling him things. Because he might have something in here that would give us great money. And he doesn't. Not really. There's a zombie outside there. Let us speak, survivor. Let's sell some stuff. I'm going to sell these. If you break this down and scrap it, it'll sell for more. But I just want to get it out of my inventory. Thanks for shopping here. Come again. Oh, I didn't sell the padded armor. I thank you, kind sir. I'm going to drop a few more things right down here. Pretty much just this ammo. I'm going to switch out that shovel for that one. Alright, there we go. Now, oh, we got a zombie outside that's going to be a problem. I usually don't like facing zombies this early. But we're going to do what we have to do. Now, this is why I make the spear. Because the spear, if you use... There are two attacks. The regular attack. And the power attack. Now, the power attack causes bleeding. So you can watch him. His health is just going to go down, and he'll bleed out. Two, one... And there you go. That's why I make the spear. I keep my distance. And still... Do damage. Now, there's a wolf over there. We're going to stay away from that. We are not ready for a wolf. So what I'm going to do, in the top right, you can see gather small stone, gather clay soil. I need 500 of each. So we're going to go right over here. I love these things. This is where I gather all my stone from, pretty much. And how I do that is I jump up top. This gets me above everything. I can see around, see if there are any zombies coming after me. And then I take my stone axe and I crouch. So listen to how loud this is. Now listen to how loud it is if I crouch. Okay, so it is muffled and it generates less heat in the area for the heat map. So I just crouch. I'm just going to smack the hell out of this rock until I have... 500, and you can see the countdown in the top right. And I can hear that there's a zombie to my right right now. I think it's that big guy with the white shirt. Yep. So we're going to take care of him just so he's not an issue. Again, I could shoot him with a bow, but I don't have enough arrows right now. So, power attack. He'll start bleeding out. Power attack again, and now it stacks. So he's going down two instead of one every second. And I can just leave him if I want to. He'll, he'll just bleed out. That guy, do the same thing. See, he died. Now we got this guy bleeding out. I hit him again. There. And we'll grab that nest while we're here. And get back up on top of here. Now the reason I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk while I'm hitting this rock. The reason I choose laborer or farmer. Food is a big deal in Darkness Falls. You starve and you go thirsty very, very quickly, a lot in Darkness Falls. So food is a big thing. But so is crafting your horde base and being able to craft other objects, um, other tools, better weapons, things like that. And the axe broke, so we're going to select the axe. Do not scrap things when they break. Repair them. So anyway, the horde base is a big deal, especially early on, being able to craft that. And the laborer quest 
gets you set up really well. So I'm gonna get all the stone I can. I'm gonna get the clay that I need. And I usually go over, so I don't stop at 500, because I'm gonna need more stone to be able to craft more arrows and other items later on. So I just keep going until I get to usually like 600 or 700, depending on if I've found a different tool. Because sometimes when you're looting, instead of just a stone axe, you'll find a pickaxe. If you find a pickaxe, I'd use that instead of this. But I have this, this is what I have to work with, so I'm not worried about it. Just gonna use what I've got. Yes, this is tedious, but... Alright, there we go. How much do we have now for stone? We've got 741. Okay, so now let's start getting the clay. This is where the shovel comes in. And again, and again this would be a, a stone shovel if we didn't find this one in the vehicle that we looted. And all I do is I dig down one block. There we go. I stand in this block, and I literally just make a circle around me. That way I'm not running around. I just stand in this circle. I can jump out of it at any time. If I make it too deep, then I wouldn't be able to escape if I had to. And I just stand in this pit, and I just turn in a circle. And there, my stamina is starting to run out. So I need to pause for a second. Look around, make sure nobody's coming here to get me. We're good. And we keep going. Again, I do not stop at 500. I continue past to, again, like 600 or 700. Just because I'm going to need the clay to make some other stuff. Stamina again, so we have to pause. Now you can get pretty far with your class quests depending on which class you choose. You can get pretty far in day one with them. We lucked out because we looted the one forge and it had 62 forged iron in it. That'll come in handy for the last class quest. Okay, so now we've just got 500 clay. Where is it? Right there. Let me actually put that right there. There. That's how I usually have this set up. These slots almost always remain the same. These aren't usually here. But for completing the first class quest, we got some clothing. So we're going to put that on. Where? Where? We got a mining helmet, which is fantastic because... It has a flashlight. So we can see at night a lot. And this broke. Now in order to in order to repair scrap item scrap iron items, you need to have iron. So we're gonna select the shovel, hit repair, that'll take sixteen seconds, and then we'll continue. But now that we have done that, you can see our axe is also pretty low. We're going to repair the axe as well. And then I want to get some arrows. So I can make, I'm going to make 40 and 40. So 40 sticks and 40 uh, sharp stone. So stick, 40. And while those are crafting, I'm just going to keep doing some stuff here. Get myself more clay. Not really worried about too much on day one. 
except for getting started with my class, getting to the trader, and then we'll worry about food in a minute. Okay, so those are made, so now we're going to make arrows. And then we're going to do this next class step, or quest, which is craft cobblestone frame shapes and then place those frame shapes. In order to craft cobblestone frame shapes, you need cobblestone rocks. And it had us get 500 um, clay and 500 stone so that we could make 500 cobblestone rocks which is what we need to make 100 frame shapes. So those are in the queue down here after the arrows. The reason I made the arrows first is because the arrows are only going to take like two minutes. The rocks are going to take eight. If I run into trouble or zombies and I, and I do not have enough arrows or weaponry to deal with it, I'm not going to survive long enough. So I'd rather get my arrows first and then the cobblestone rocks when those have to, because those will have to take their time. So what we're going to do now is while we're waiting for that, we're just going to loot a little more. Get whatever we can. There's a chicken right there, so we're actually going to try to kill the chicken. Now if you crouch, you do extra damage. There we go. So you can see sneak damage too. So now we've killed this chicken. Cut it up with the bone knife. You can see in the bottom right hand corner, we're getting some meat, feathers, and bone. There we go. Pick that up. This is a potato, so we're going to pick that up. Why not? Let me gather that. We're just going to loot the immediate area. Now, lead. Fishing weights, just scrap those for the actual lead. And this is pretty much what I do day one, is I worry about getting through the first two class quest steps, crafting the weaponry and the tools that I want, or that I need to at least start doing everything. Oh, now we're encumbered by two. You see the two down here next to the person? That's because right here, these two. All of these are taking up spots that are available. These two start taking up these spots, which encumber. Now we're also going to grab oh, more nests. I don't need this many feathers, but you know what? I'll take them just in case. I'd rather have them and not need them than need, than need them and not have them. The other thing you can get is some yucca. bag over here. Okay, we're, we're going to sell that and we're going to sell this helmet. So I put stuff I'm going to sell like separately from all my other stuff. It just helps me remember, hey, that's down there because I need to get rid of it. I'm not going to worry about the carrots right now. But I'm just going to run around here, grab some things. Now you can see I'm moving slower now. I'm encumbered by seven spaces. So I have seven, well there's eight. I have eight item spots that are beyond the ones I'm really able to carry. Now let's loot this garbage can right here and grab this yucca. We're not going to travel too far into this town, but I am going to grab these things. Now, I don't really want to mess with that can right there because I don't know what's in here. I really don't want to make a bunch of zombies mad at me. At least not yet. Now, you hear that? Crickets? Crickets means it's 1900 or 7 p.m. Nighttime happens. 
at 2200 or 10 p.m. And that is when you absolutely do not want to be outside. So usually when you hear these crickets, it's time to start heading back to base or shelter. That's right, there was a wolf out here, wasn't there? <laughs> Forgot about that. So you want to start heading back to your base or... If it, how'd you get in here? Or if you don't have a base, or you're too far from your base, you want to start looking for some shelter. Look at that, a level 11. Alright, let's go in here and sell. You know, I'm going to get rid of this trash too because it makes noise. Like, listen, I'll walk across this, you'll hear the... No here, here's me just walking on open, gr open ground. Okay, nothing. Here's me walking over trash. Hear that little crunch? That will alert zombies to your presence. So I'm just going to get rid of some of this. I don't plan on walking around down here at night at all. But I'd rather do this and not have to worry about it. Anyway, inside to talk to the trader. <whistles> Shit. Okay, so that zombie is going to be a problem if it becomes nighttime because she knows we're here. We're just going to take care of her right now. Whoa. So you can see the range on the spear. I'm hitting her from here. And she's still a good distance away. She's not going to be able to hit me. From there. She dropped a bag of sand. Pocket sand. We're just going to come in here to the trader. We're just going to sell some stuff. Get a little bit of money. There we go, we got 591. So if we wanted to, we could buy something from him, like um, some food or something like that. We don't Gratitude need to. And safe travels, friend. He, we also have this out here. Now, it used to be that the vending machine items cost way less than the trader items. So what they've done is they've actually made them the same price now. So there's no, there's no advantage to either one. But we're going to get lamb rations. So the rations... If you look here, food poisoning, 0%. Any other canned food has a possibility of giving you food poisoning. So that's why you go with the rations, and you can eat the rations straight from the can. You don't have to worry about anything. So I'm actually going to grab both of those cans because I'm going to need food. And upstairs, I believe, we have our water being made. I'm going to grab everything from here. Now look at it. I'm encumbered by 21 so running isn't exactly very Can I help easy you? but we're up here we got some water here we got rations here I'm gonna scrap empty cans because I don't keep those I do not hang on to empty cans let's offload some stuff that we don't need oh we do need those Uh, glass we will never need. I'm gonna kill you or die trying. And that means that he sees a zombie somewhere. And he's gonna go mess with that and poke it in the butt and bring them back to us, which is not what we need. What else is in here? Don't need the glass in there. Don't put the ammo in there. Okay, so we are going to eat the lamb rations. There we go. And we are going to turn this off and drink all of our water. I will drink it all now because I'd rather be full on water and not have to worry about it for a while. And not be full on water and have issues come up because of that. And the next thing I do in here is I open this. Okay, we've still got 66 to go. What do we have in here that I can... Okay. Is that, now, I think we can make charred meat. Okay, you can make charred meat if you don't have a 
cooking pot or a cooking grill. You can still make charred meat and have some food that way. But it takes five pieces of meat to make one charred meat, so it's a little expensive. Now to find out the time, so we know exactly what time it is, you can go to either her or the trader, look at their inventory, and down here it tells you the time. Remember, you have until 2200 until nighttime. Goodbye. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to run over to the trader here. Actually, no, I'm not running to the trader. Well, I will because I'll sell that brass. I do not need brass. Let us speak, survivor. I might as well just sell this, get it out of here. Great there. doing business with you. Close the Come door. Back and tell your friends. The other place you can find out the time is right here at the vending machine. Same location. It'll tell you the time. It's faster than going to the trader or the White River Scout. Now, later on in the game, you can craft a watch. And that will be a mod that you put on a um, piece of clothing. Um, a glove, I believe. And then it will show up in the bottom left-hand corner down here where the encumbered person is and the jacket. Right now, I'm also going to just offload some stuff into this cupboard here because, again, I don't need it in my inventory right now. And there we go. We have... We have freed up space. Now we have 500 of the cobblestone rocks now. Close this. And get upstairs here because it's about to be nighttime. And I'm going to tell, or I'm going to craft cobblestone frame shapes. And again, 500 cobblestone rocks makes 100 cobblestone frame shapes, which is what we need here. And that will take two minutes. So I usually do that at night because it takes a decent amount of time that I can't craft or repair any of my other items. So if I'm running around just looting, that's when I'll craft the cobblestone rocks. And then at nighttime, or when I'm running around looting some more, I'll be crafting the cobblestone frame shapes. And depending on how much progress you make, what you find when you loot, things may go faster, they may go slower. Now it's kind of just a waiting game, not for the rest of the night, but for some of it. Now the other thing is, see step two where it says place cobblestone frame shapes? Do not start doing that until you craft all of your frame shapes. If you start placing things before you've crafted all of them, when it is a quest item like this, you can run into trouble. For the farmer class, I'll use this as, as an example. One of the quest steps is craft four farm plot blocks and place four farm plot blocks. If, as it's crafting, you are placing them because you can't pick them up, it will not count that you've crafted it because you've taken it out of your inventory. So for that, wait till all four have been crafted and are in your inventory, then place them. If you don't wait, it will not count it, and then you will need to craft more. Hear that noise? That means it is nighttime now. And that means it's time to crouch. So see the bottom left-hand corner? Oh. <laughs> right down here, you have your, uh, your visibility meter, I guess, or your noise meter. As I move, you see it goes up. If I stand still, it drops down. You want to crouch at night, especially when you are not high up in a building or far underground because the zombies will hear you. And darkness falls at night. Every single zombie sprints. Every single one. Now that we've made our cobblestone frame shapes right here, I'm going to move them down here. And because they're frame shapes and not just blocks, you can pick them up. So here, I'll place one, pick it up. And that's all you need to do for the next step, which is place cobblestone frame shapes. You do not need what are you looking for? to place them all at once or have them all on the ground at once. You can place them, pick them up, and continue placing them. And this is how I get to 100 as well. Is I'll just place these in a line, and I'll just keep going until I get to 100. Because the reward for doing this, and you can double stack, I mean, 
can do whatever you want to. Just make sure you place 100 of them. And we're just going to keep going until we place all 100. Which doesn't take very long, especially if you're doing like 8 or 10. So we'll do this. Look at that, we're already at 58. So the reward for this, I believe, or for this quest step, I believe is more rations and one or two cans of murky water. But we're about to find out in a moment, because we're already at 80. Now you really kind of want to limit how much you move around at night, but I'm not too worried about it because this is just the tutorial to show you guys. And there we just completed that quest step. So now, let's see what we got from it. We got two rations and two cans of murky water. So I'm going to immediately put the cans of murky water in here and make boiled water so that I can actually have something to drink when I need it. The next quest steps, gather iron, gather leather, scrap iron fire axe, and scrap iron pickaxe. I was going to say, I hope that doesn't make too much noise. So there, we've gathered all the leather that we need. So we need iron, and then we need to make those. Now, you can get iron by taking these apart, taking the desk apart, or any number of things. Taking um, empty cans apart, scrapping short iron pipes, but we will need those for the next step. Now, I thought I had the empty cans around here somewhere. I must have just, I must have scrapped them already, because I don't hang on to them. Now, I don't want to beat these apart because that's going to make a bunch of noise and draw in zombies. Alright, that just finished, so let's get the water in our inventory, and let's actually go up top here and see if we can see any zombies. I'm just going to go slowly so I don't make a lot of noise, I just want to show you what some of the zombies look like, if there are any out here. Oh, this is going to make noise. That didn't make too much. So let's see if we've got some zombies out here. Yep, right there, that's an irradiated zombie, so if he gets too close for you, to you or damages you and stuff like that, you'll actually start suffering radiation poisoning. Zombie there. Now, yes, they do just walk around at night, but if they are alerted to your presence, they will sprint. And the worst thing is being out at night and having a wandering horde run past where you are. So that's really it for day one beginner's guide to Darkness Falls. This is all I do day one is get settled in the trader, loot, and get the first and get as many quest steps done as I possibly can. That's really it. With the plot blocks, or not the plot blocks, the um the frame shapes, the cobblestone ones, tomorrow I will start establishing a horde base. And I'll also go hunting, I'll do a bunch of stuff, but that is for another day. Thank you very much for joining me, I greatly appreciate it. I hope this was helpful, and that there are some good tips and tricks in case you wanted to begin playing Darkness Falls, or you already play Darkness Falls, and just wanted to see how somebody else takes on day one. So thank you very much for joining me, and I'll catch you guys next time in more 7 Days to Die Darkness Falls. Have a good one, everybody.